Welcome everyone and thank you for joining the Vision Australia Library 101 webinar this morning, Wednesday the 18th of April. My name is Catalan and I will be hosting this event. I would like to start off by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we are all meeting today and pay my respects to their elders both past and present. This morning we will be streaming live from Vision Australia's offices in Melbourne and Gosford and are also recording this webinar so that if you miss out on any information, you'll be able to catch up via the podcast. You are welcome to share the recording. You can ask questions live to our panellists by navigating to the chat feature on the Zoom webinar screen. We will do our best to answer your questions, but if we don't manage it in the time, we will certainly get back to you. Our pan panellists work daily with people who are blind and low vision. And we hope that today's information will give you enough to get you started and also to form wonderful partnerships with us in the future. Just a little bit of trivia about the library team. Our team also includes two guide dogs, Gambler and Reba, a seeing eye dog, um, breeding dog, and also Carmen, who's a 10 week old puppy that one of our library staff is um, fostering at the moment. This morning, all our, we will be um, talking about who can join the Vision Australia Library, how we can help support your borrowers who are blind, have low vision or have a print disability. We will demonstrate our free Vision Australia Connect app and our 3G Daisy player. We will talk about how we can help people access their personal information in accessible formats. And finally, we will introduce you to the wonders of audio description. I'd like to now introduce our panel. We have Anne Ford, Coordinator, Community Service Engagement. Hi everyone. Jamie Kelly, um, Online Training Support Officer. Good morning everyone. Kathy Feller in Gosford also um, service engagement consultant library and information and we have Sarah Blowdorn, student uh, children and youth services librarian. I'd like to now introduce Anne and ask her to provide some bit more information about people who have low vision. Hi everyone, nice to have a chat to you this morning. It's a bit chilly here in Melbourne, it's about <clears throat> three degrees, so it's a bit cooler than we first anticipated, but here we go. Well, the Vision Australia Library is a public library. We provide braille and audio materials to around <laughs> 15,000 people nationally. People can access our library in a, um, for a variety of reasons. They may be blind or have low vision or have a, have a print disability. So those people who are blind who have low vision might have macular degeneration, they might have cataracts, or they may have a congenital fault with their eyesight from their, their early years. But for those people with a print disability, the, it's a different thing altogether. And for many people in our community, they find it hard to, to get access to materials for them. You may not be aware that we provide services to people with a print disability. So what is a print disability? It, it could be someone who can no longer hold a book or manipulate a book as they normally would. So they might have Parkinson's or they might have MS and that means that they can access our collections. They may also have a print disability such as dyslexia. Now, dyslexia affects about 10% of the Australian population, and it's basically a, a processing issue with the brain when reading print. And these people have um, really great abilities to think about the big picture of things and um, think outside the square. But when it comes to reading and taking in information that we take for granted, it becomes a real struggle. So we're here at the Vision Australia Library can help you assist those people that are coming to your libraries asking questions. Now, what do we have to offer? We have a collection of around 40,000 items in Braille, but also in audio format. And amongst those collections, we have daily newspapers. 
which are both local newspapers and the um, ones that, you know, the, the Age and the Sydney Morning Herald, so the big, the big newspapers, the Financial Review. And people can also access magazines such as the Women's Weekly, Wheels Magazine, Choice Magazine. So when people start to lose their vision or have a print disability, one of the first things that they struggle with is keeping in contact with information. Just as your library is about keeping people in contact with information, that's what our role is. We want to keep people in contact with the information that may, they may have given up on trying to get. Many people even give up reading and it's such a shame for them to do that. So um, they often come to your libraries and they, if they hear about us, will come to our libraries and access our um, information. I'm just making sure I know where I'm up to and don't miss out any important information. So how do people actually access our collections? We have a diff our, our material is formatted in a DAISY format, which means it's a layered uh, structured format, which means all of our items can be read like you and I read a book. So people can go backwards, they can go forwards. Our devices remember where people are up to and um, people can even put bookmarks in. So that means that they have the ability, if they're studying a book or a text, they can go back to a place, just like you and I can when we read books. We also have, a, we have two players which are, which are either a type of online player, which is the 3G player and the Wi-Fi player. And we also have an app called the VA Connect app. Now, once people join the library, which I will talk a little bit about in a minute, we organise a profile for them and they tell us what type of books they like to read. And these books are um, pushed out onto their devices or in the case of the VA Connect app, people can actually access our catalogue direct and they can um, download or stream the book. But once more, Jamie's going to give you the, all the information about that in a minute. So people access our collection in a variety of ways and our information is actually also, as well as being in audio, we do have some information like the daily newspapers, which have the print there as well as the audio and as well as some parts of the children's collections have the print as well as the audio. So once more, people with dyslexia have the ability to listen and read along. So how do you join our library? So people can either give us a call on 1300 654 656. They can also email us, but you can also log on to our, log on to Google, put in Vision Australia Library and it goes straight to our homepage. You will see a join the library button and you can join our library direct from that point we will then get back to you with login details and IDs. But as a library, uh, as a librarian, you have the ability, if you come across someone, a member of the public that seems to be struggling with their eyesight or is using up all of your audio books listening and you're running short, you can think, oh, they can perhaps join the Vision Australia Library and we can work together to supply them with materials. It's a good way to just, uh, hopefully today you might become more aware of people who are moving in and around your library and those people that might need a little bit more help with accessing materials. As a librarian, you also, and as a library as a whole, you can partner with Vision Australia and we can help with training on our devices and the use of the VA Connect app so that your staff members can be confident in helping people and showing them how to use our devices and the app. Um, you can also have access to the app as a demonstration in a demonstration mode, which means you can actually have it on a lap, on an iPad or on a, a smart device of some type that means that you can show it to people when they come into the library. So this is a really good lead into Jamie because Jamie is now going to talk to you about all of our devices and how they work. And um, th 
thank you everyone for listening and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to put them through on the chat to Catlin. Bye for now. Well good morning everybody it's nice to be here with you and as Anne said, I'm going to talk about two main devices that our members are using. They're both online devices as we are moving people more and more online and away from the old traditional methods of, of library um, access uh, because we, we want people to move online as the main way of accessing our content. Now I'm totally blind, so to do this demonstration, I'm going to use my iPhone with voiceover. So, um, people who use voiceover, you use a series of gestures to navigate the screen and also Siri in some aspects as well. So for example, for me to launch VA Connect, rather than me just swiping the screen like that, I'm going to say to Siri, open VA Connect. Now, so now it's logging me in as I hope you can see. Um, it can sometimes can be a little bit slow. Okay, so my bookshelf is there. So I'm just gonna get past that little alert message um, because we send messages out to the app and to our online place if we need to notify members of any outages or if any books need to be um, renewed because our books have a two months loan. So I'm now just going to show you, I'm going to swipe through the bookshelf. Okay, so I've got an online book, which means that it's streaming. And that book I've downloaded. So now I'm going to double tap on the book, which will open the book. And you, and you heard that little beep beep sound. That means that the app is loading and that sound is like a please wait sound so that people don't get impatient and start tapping all over the place. So now on the screen, you'll see a number of controls. And if I tap above the home button, there's the play button. Play button. This audio book has been structured using one level, which contains all main headings listed within So I can then tap to the next button. Okay. A new story in an ancient landscape. So this is an audio book with a human narrator. returns to the red earth of the Kimberley with a passionate story of resistance and resilience under its soaring blue sky. I'll just tap the stop button. So the app remembers where you are in the book and you can do that with all your books or any content. It remembers where you last were. You do have the ability to not only change the speed of the voice, but you can also um, change a whole lot of other audio and magnification options in the settings. So for people with low vision, um, they can change the font and all that sort of stuff, which is extremely useful. So I'm just gonna go out of the bookshelf by tapping the back button. And now I'm going to show you a newspaper. So I'm just gonna go over to the newspaper tab, uh, the su subscription tab, and that'll bring up what newspapers I have available. I'm hoping that you can see my screen okay. And I'm just waiting for that to load. So there's today's Sydney Morning Herald. I'm just gonna tap on that. And now you'll see the text on the screen in a minute. And if I tap the play button. So that's a synthetic voice and you can also see the text on the screen. I'll go to the next article. Okay, so I'm just going to stop that. So that's how you would... Oh, no, it didn't stop. Hang on. Okay, now we've got it. So we stopped the newspaper and newspapers, uh, we have about 480 odd newspapers from News Limited, Fairfax, APN, The West, uh, are probably the main four publishers that we have. And um, you can subscribe to as many newspapers and magazines as you like. There's no limit to that. 
with our books, um, we offer Daisy Audio, Daisy Text, and of course, Braille. Braille is very important. My notes are here in Braille, as you can see on um, some actually some Braille label on, because, <laughs> so it doesn't rattle as I'm reading it during the um, session this morning. So the app is is crucial to us because it's it's a free app and you can um, download it from the Google Play Store or through the Apple uh, App Store. And so people that join our library, more often than not these days are using the app. But if you're somebody that doesn't have the internet, you don't have a computer, but you want to access our books, you can't access CDs. So we have here what we fondly call a 3G player. And uh, this used to be a CD player. You can see the slot in the front where you, there used to be a CD drive. Now there's a modem in there. On the back is an, is an aerial, which connects through the 3G Optus network. So I've turned the player on and there's only a few buttons that members have to cope with so that it keeps the player very simple and easy to use. You've got the rewind button, play, next, and then two bookshelf backwards and forwards button a return button to send the book back to the library, power button, sleep. And then up the top, you've got volume and tone. So I've turned the player on. I want to see what's on my bookshelf and I'm just going to tap the bookshelf button now. I might need to turn that up a bit. Okay, so now you heard there expires 15th of June. That tells the member that They've got a new book and this is when the book will expire. And before, seven days before they, the book expires, they get a little message on the play to say, this book will expire in seven days and they can contact the library to renew the book. They can't do it through the play yet. So I'll keep going through my bookshelf. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens expires Saturday the 16th of June. The Sydney Morning Herald, Tuesday, April 17th. That's yesterday, Sydney Morning Herald. The Star, Newcastle and Lake Macquarie, Tuesday, April 17th, 2018. Tape and by James Clavel expires. There's another Saturday, book. The 16th of June. I might actually go back to the yesterday, Sydney Morning Herald. The Sydney Morning Herald. And just play a little bit of that for you. So I'm just going to tap the play button. And there's a little bit of delay because the player is connecting to the network through Optus and that chime is saying, please wait. Just don't tap any buttons. So here we go. It's just about to load. Beginning with title. Sydney Morning Herald, Tuesday the 17th of April, 2018. First edition, a Vision Australia production, copyright Fairfax Media section news subsection general headline bank balance supersized after burger by michael whitburn legal affairs editor on paper sydney lawyer brody jack clark will life many now i can tap to the next article by tapping the next button headline migrant underpaid 93 weeks and wages by anna patty workplace editor a migrant worker who was under paid the value of 93 weeks wages so the quality is very good these are text files by synthetic voice on the player. So I'm now just going to quickly go to a book. Bookshelf. The Star. Newcastle. Newspaper. Taipan by James Clavel expires. Taipan. Okay, that's a mighty long book. I'll just tap play and we'll hear the beginning of that. Just so you can hear that sounds. Beginning with title. Taipan, the epic novel of the founding of Hong Kong by James Clavell. This book is read by Gilbert Jackson. For Tai Tai, for Holly, and for Michaela. So I can now note, skip through all this introductory material to the start. To the people of Hong Kong. Book one. Chapter one. Okay. So it's very easy for someone to say, no, I don't, know, don't want all that preliminary material. I'm going to skip through to the beginning of the book. So um, the beauty of this device is that all our content is available to members through this player and they don't have the internet, they don't have a computer. The library chooses their books for them through their 
profile because one of the discussions we have with people when they join is what sort of books do you like, what authors do you like, and we set up a profile and then they have five books at any one time on the machine, they return one, overnight they get a new book on their bookshelf. So it's a very simplistic, very easy way for people to access our library. Obviously one of the things is that they need to have good Optus coverage. If they don't, then there are other options. One of the options is a Wi-Fi player that's the same as this, except it connects to their local Wi-Fi. Okay, so there's a very basic um, um, showing you how the 3G player works and the app works. But I also want to say too that um, the voice activation devices now in the last 12 months have really grown from strength to strength. That's the Google Home, the Alexa, and the HomePod. And uh, even now, if you've got the Google Home, you can access Google Playbooks. And in actual fact, I only found out yesterday that Vision Australia has an app now, so that if you're using Google Home, you can say, you know, okay, Google, tell me about Vision Australia, and you'll get an interactive app. And uh, you can ask Vision Australia about how you can access the library, how you can listen to their to, to Vision Australia radio, how you can contact Vision Australia and so forth. So I suggest later on, if you've got Google Home, go and give it a try. Thank you, Jamie. Just a little question. Um, we have participants this morning from all around Australia. Is the 3G available everywhere? There needs to be Optus coverage for uh, for that to be available. So if you live in a black spot, then unfortunately it isn't gonna work for you. We do have a couple of different aerials that people can use this as a larger aerial. And we do have other devices that we can offer people if 3G isn't an option. Oh, thank you, Jamie. That's really great to know. I'd now like to invite Sarah Blodorn, our Children and Youth Services um, Librarian, to tell us a little bit about the services and um, collections that we have for our younger members. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time this morning to have a listen to what Vision Australia has to offer. Um, so I'm just going to talk about our Children's and Youth Services. Um, at VA, we support the needs of children who have vision loss or a print disability. As Anne said, a print disability covers a lot of different areas and the one that we see most commonly in our young people is dyslexia. Up to one in 10 children in Australia are dyslexic, so it's a huge issue and um, we can support um, children that are struggling to read conventional print by supplementing that with audiobooks. So we have a large collection of titles that meets both the educational and recreational needs of our young clients. Briefly, I'll talk about um, what's in our young adult collection, the extra support services that we offer around education, um, also what steps to take if you meet a child in your workplace, in your library, or um, maybe your school library that could benefit from our library service and how to get them connected with us. So I'll also briefly tell you about our Felix Library, which is a special library that we have for vision impaired children aged zero to seven. So first of all, our collection, we have thousands of titles for children and young adults. These include, but it's not limited to early readers, fairy tales and nursery rhymes, first chapter books, children's titles and young adult novels. We also have some um, children's nonfiction titles. We have items both in braille and in audio format. Audio it would be the larger part of our collection as we find that's the format that most of our children want to access our books in but we do also have braille which we can post out to people all around Australia. We have two different options with braille. We have your traditional braille which is just um, pages of braille printed um, with no pictures or anything and we also have print braille which is a special collection. It is a traditional um, picture book that you might buy purchase from Dimmicks for example which has all the words and all the, um, the pictures and everything and then we overlay that with clear braille. So that's really great if you have a sighted um, parent that wants to read to a, a blind child or also the other way around, you might have a parent or grandparent that is blind, but they want to enjoy story time with their um, child or grandchild. 
Um, so we have um, the easiest way to access our collection is through our free app as Jamie demonstrated. We find that the majority of our children use the app because they're so savvy with technology um, and it's a great option because they can have it on their smartphone or their tablet. It's very portable. They can download the books and listen to them on the train on the way to school or on car trips, things like that. So they've always got it with them. Uh, we, they can also hire our 3G players and Wi-Fi players. There's no reason that they can't, but we do tend to find that most will um, prefer the app. Our audio is human narrated, which makes it so much more enjoyable to listen to as Jamie played a segment for you. It's so much nicer to hear it um, in a human voice than by computer. So most of our collection is made of this human narr narrated voice. We have books for both study and in books for enjoyment. So we try to keep as many of our prescribed English texts that are part of the curriculum in our collection. But we also try to build our collection on the latest novels from popular authors so that kids with a print disability are reading what their friends are reading at school. We make a, an effort to make available books that children want to read. Um, and we recently completed a survey of our young adults and we've been implementing collection development strategies into our collection um, but of course we can't have every title but we do have options if there is a book missing from our library um, we can organize an interlibrary loan wherever possible from other libraries in Australia in an audio format so usually that's a CD format or we can put a suggestion into our acquisitions librarian and hopefully either have um, that audio title bought or we also produce audio in-house at Vision Australia. So student support is a special department we have in Vision Australia specifically for the educational needs of our children. So any child that's in primary, secondary or tertiary education can access student support. And what it means is that if they need materials for their studies, it could be anything from a textbook to class handouts, even test papers, we can have them put into an accessible format for them. So this is up to them, whichever one is best for them. Um, and it could be braille, audio or large print. We work along with the school or the education department um, to ensure that the cost isn't carried by the parents. Generally, they will cover that so um, we can support the family without having an excessive financial burden on them. We run a number of programs for our children and young adults. Um, we've just relaunched our thousand books before school. So um, for Victorian libraries, you'll know this is a program that has been rolled out um, about a year ago, um, encouraging children zero to five years to read a thousand books before they start school. So we have some participants in Victoria who we send them out braille and audio and they're completely um, fine for them to supplement um, print books with that because at the end of the day it's just about getting um, books into kids hands or ears isn't it so it doesn't matter the format. Um, we run a summer reading club every year and this is really well attended from all from kids all over Australia. Um, we set them little goals to enjoy audio books over the summer months. It's a really great way to expose them to new authors and new titles that they might not have tried before and we have great prizes as well so that's always a really popular program. We support the Premier's Reading Challenge across the states so we um, have as many books as we can that meet the Premier's Reading Challenge criteria and on the list. And um, that's the list across Australia. So that kids um, participating in that don't have to miss out because they can't read the print books. Um, so I'll just briefly talk about Felix. It's a special library that's for specifically for blind and low vision children from zero to seven years. So it serves to introduce them to literacy through braille books and tactile aids. Membership is free and um, membership to the library in general is free uh, and kits can be sent across Australia. They get sent these great little kits which include a print braille book. So that's the print book with the braille overlay. Um, also an audio CD of the story, a tactile book and a tactile toy. So these kits are designed to really expose kids from a young age, even um, you know from as little as a few months old to braille to help them to make those early steps towards literacy. So if you do have um, young clients that have a vision loss, um, Felix is a great option and a great starting point. At seven, they do graduate and then they join our main library, um, but then they can still access the audiobooks and the braille. So we continue to support them from very, very early literacy all the way through to adulthood. So to become a member, um, as I pointed out, there's no cost to use our library. And um, anybody that has a vision loss or a print disability can join. Membership um, 
there's no costs ongoing either, um, which is really good as we're a public library, we don't charge for service. Um, and to join, the easiest way is our online membership form. You will be asked to provide a referee. So this is the name of an educational or um, medical professional that can support their diagnosis, can um, confirm their diagnosis. So um, we often find even a school librarians, um, school support officers, psychologists, these kind of people can definitely recommend children for our service. Um, if you'd like to know more information specifically about how you can support children that might come into your library that have a print disability or vision loss, please do get in contact. We often work together with other organisations, including um, dyslexia organisations, to come out and provide um, educational sessions and just get the word out there so we can support parents and kids to ensure that they're getting the audio and the braille that they need to really succeed um, at school, but also, you know, as they're developing into adults. So please get in contact. I know Catalan's going to send you some information at the end of the session. So if you have any questions about children's services, feel free to send me any questions or um, yeah, we can make a time to chat and do a training session at another time. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble. Um, yeah, I'll pass back to Catalan now and she can continue to tell you about her, our services. Thank you, Sarah. That was great. And we've had a lovely comment from Queensland about how wonderful your summer reading club was. Oh, so good. Thank you, Sarah. That's nice. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Cathy Fowler from our um, Gosford office. Cathy, when you're not seeing as well as you used to, being able to read your personal documents and um, things like that without assistance from your family and friends can be really difficult. Can you tell us a bit about uh, the production of materials and how we offer personal support to our members. Yep, no worries. Good morning, everybody, and thanks, Catelyn. We have a production and transcription team, and what they do is they can reproduce anything into an accessible format from a standard print format. And that's so it can be easily read by a person with a print disability. So this can include things like their rates notices, electricity, telco accounts, and even sheet music can be produced in an alternate format. Um, also, the production unit produce accessible content to businesses and also to government bodies as well. So that's things like uh, maybe it's the menu at the local cafe or pub, uh, the tax pack, even exam papers can be produced. This so this service is though, it's um, based on a fee-for-service fee for um, basis and what it does is it generates revenue for the organisation and it supports um, the production of uh, the materials that we provide at no cost to our members. So we also have, um, for, for something a little bit different, is a thing or a, an option called personal support. And what that does is it provides access to 360 pages of content to our members and our clients in their preferred format each year. And with an additional 360 pages of content if it's already in existence. And this can include really neat stuff like a favourite recipe or storybook or even manuals for a TV or washing machine. Now, the next part um, that we also provide is audio description. That's fabulous, Cathy. Now, I was at the theatre the other day, and I'm really glad that you mentioned audio description because there were some people there in the audience um, who I thought might have been blind, and I thought, how on earth are they experiencing the show? Aha, uh -huh. okay. What audio description does is it... Um, I suppose you could say it vividly and succinctly brings to life on stage action during pauses in the dialogue. And that also includes um, descriptions of uh, transitions, movements, gestures, props, settings, costumes, and even the scenery. Highly trained and experienced audio describers provide this information live, and that's via little earbuds during the performances. Now, go on, ask me, how do they do this? I know you're keen to know. What they do is they first attend the performance in the theatre, and that's so that they can experience it from an end user's perspective. Then they attend twice more, but this time they're in a sound booth. And this is where they work together to deliver, uh, I suppose you'd say consistent terminology. 
So, for example, if they're sharing the uh, description of a play, um, there may be a, a couch involved. So instead of saying one says couch, one says sofa, they'll both decide, well, let's call it a couch. So a well-executed audio description will paint a visual picture without bias. And that's so the end user can come to their own conclusions as the events on stage uh, unfold. And that would be just the same as uh, a sighted person would uh, be able to enjoy the, um, the performance. So what I'd like you all to do now, I know it sounds a bit daft, but I want you to sit back and relax and close your eyes and just listen to the uh, little bit of Frozen in audio description. A carrot-nosed coaline snowman shuffles up to a purple flower peeping out of deep snow. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> he takes a deep sniff. <sighs> His nose lands on a frozen pond. A reindeer looks up and pants like a dog. <gasps> Seeing the reindeer slip on the ice, the snowman smiles and moves towards him. Though actually, he's running on the spot. The reindeer falls on his chin. The snowman uses his arm as a crutch. The reindeer paddles his front legs. Head over heels, the snowman crawls along the ice. The reindeer does the breaststroke. The snowman rolls his body, but flips onto his back. The reindeer's tongue sticks to the ice. The snowman hurls his head. Twig arm and reindeer lips tug at the carrot. The carrot flies off and lands in soft snow. The reindeer goes after it with snowman and his body parts hanging on his tail. The snowman puts himself back together again and glumly contemplates his noseless state. The reindeer jams the carrot back in place and pants like a proud puppy. The snowman pats him with his stick thin arm, then goes to sneeze. He grabs his nose with both hands. His head shoots off. Frozen, coming this winter in 3D. Thank you, everybody. We now um, will go through some of the questions that people have sent, and we hope that that audio description has um, given you a little bit of an idea of what it might like might be like um, for a low vision person or a blind person who who is attending the theatre. Um, now, I'll just go back to the top of the questions. We have had quite a few questions from people, and um, the first question we have here is do you need to, how many physical devices do you have for loan? So I guess we have a Wi-Fi player, we have um, the 3G player, we have um, several that we can purchase from the library, but it's really the Wi-Fi and the 3G, isn't it, Jamie? Yes, it's 3G Wi-Fi and also um, there is portable devices too that we have called the Victor Reader Stream if we have them available, they can be rented. And people often also purchase their own device as well. So um, there's plenty of options out there to purchase apart from what we offer through the library. We try to keep things simple through the library, but we can provide training for those people to use those devices and other devices. And the natural follow-on from that, of course, is, is there a charge for the um, 3G player and the Wi-Fi player? Uh, yes, there is the 3G player because we connect through Optus and the player has a SIM card. Um, there's a, a cost of $136 a year or $12 a month. But the 3G player, the Wi-Fi player is $9 a month, $99 a year. Now, often that cost can be um, can be uh, claimed through the Image Care or through the NDIS. And we're finding that more and more people are doing that. Or DVA, if you're a DVA client. Now, can people return items on a Daisy Player early if, for instance, they don't like the book? Absolutely. So, um, I mentioned before about the little square button here. If they get uh, a book on their machine they don't like, they simply hit that little return button, it sends the book back to the library, and then they get a new book the next day. If they don't like all five books, they can send them all back get five new books the next day and the same thing can happen with the app. 
And newspapers are pushed out daily, aren't they? Yes, they are. Depending if they're weekly, daily or monthly, it's whatever the publishers send. And can people use the modem in the DAISY device as Wi-Fi for a phone app if they have no internet? No, unfortunately it's locked down to the 3G player. Okay. Um, we have a question here about the cost of the library services for NDIS clients. Are the DAISY players, um, can that be covered in an NDIS package? Definitely it can. I'll butt in here. It can be um, included in an NDIS plan under technology and it also can be put into a My Aged Care plan. So we have quite a number of our clients who are using both of these types of plans to access our devices. And of course the VA Connect app is free, so that isn't a worry. With the Veterans Affairs gold card holders, the devices are covered for free. And we have a fabulous question here. How many clients can we service with these devices at a time? We have about 15,000 clients across Australia and except for those occasions when we have outages like everybody else has outages and we have the occasional issue with the Optus Towers, um, we can service all of those and we are um, constantly building our number of clients as well. Um, oh, I've got a lovely compliment here thanking us for the webinar. And a question, could I get a certificate of attendance? Yes, we will put one together for you and send it out. So please, if, you, if anybody else would like a certificate of attendance as well, please just email um, anne.ford at visionaustralia.org and her email will be um, listed at the end of this presentation. So yes, we can do that if you need it for um, CPD requirements. Oh, Sarah. How many storytelling kits are available through the Felix Library? Well, that's a good question. We have about a thousand Felix kits at the moment. It's a constantly growing collection and we have amazing volunteers that come in and assist us to make the tactile books and to put everything together. Um, there's always two copies of each title, which is interesting in the two different um, types of Braille. So there's grade one and grade two Braille. Um, so depending on where the child is at, that is at their Braille literacy and each kit is um, graded on difficulty. So obviously for very small babies, you'll be starting with a very simple book with a few words. And then as they get to that school age, they could um, definitely increase um, as their, their literacy grows. Now we, thank you, Sarah. We also have a question here about the training. Um, could we explain the training process? Do we have volunteers who visit or just over the phone or internet training for our clients? Um, we tackle, we do this in a number of fronts. We um, train people via the phone. We also have people in our offices, in our Vision Australia offices, who go out to people's homes to help people learn how to use the app. We also do training over to groups in themselves that get together. We go out and talk to groups or we use um, uh, Zoom like we are now to train um, other staff members and libraries about how to use our devices. So it happens on a number of fronts. We over the phone, face to face. Um, and we also have people emailing us every day just asking questions and confirming that they can do certain things. So uh, training is for our clients is often an ongoing process, but we're here to support them the whole way. Thank you, Anne. And we're glad that you um, appreciate the wonderful unbiased picture that is painted by audio description. Um, it's certainly the aim of, aim of it, to give that full experience to people who can't visually see any performance. Now we have a question here about brochures which could be included in library bags for homebound patrons. Um, I believe we have those and we can certainly send them out to you. So again, if you'd like to contact Anne um, and we'll, we'll dig those out and send them to you. Is there a cost for the literacy kits, Sarah? No, no cost at all to use our Felix Library, just like the rest of our services. Um, as Jamie mentioned, the only cost you'll incur in using the library is if you rent one of our players. 
Um, but no, the Felix Cross uh, kits are sent out free of cost. They're sent through blind post. So even the postage is covered. All you need to do is pop them to the post office and return them to us and then a new one will come magically. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Now we have, um, can we uh, tell you what happens when a client changes their profile needs? How do they do this? Uh, can I answer this one? Yep. Certainly, yeah. Often we have people ring up the library or they're in contact with us in a different way and they will say to us, oh, I'm sick and tired of getting mystery books. I'm, I just want something light. So we can go into their profile. We have a discussion with them about what are their favourite authors, what would they like to change, and then we update their profile needs. The profile that is set at the beginning is certainly not set in cement. And it's something that we, it's a working document probably between our clients and us. So it's always changing and people often hear about a book that's been released on the radio and they would like to have that added to their uh, books to read or they have a favourite author. So we can always update their uh, profile by adding that to their reading lists. Thank you. It's good to know that you're not stuck with the books that you initially selected with all our reading tastes change over time. Catelyn, can I also add, if I'm on, yep. that people often also with these players get their family members to log into their library account and add books for them as well. So there's always that option for people to, um, to have that extra support. So they do that through the IXS online catalogue? That's right, yes. Yeah. And we can certainly provide the family members with the um, login to the borrower so that they can log in and do that. Now, probably a question for you, Jamie. Can the old flex dogs be modified for VA use? They certainly can. Um, our technicians do that here. Uh, the Wi-Fi players that we have, the old PTXs can be modified for both Wi-Fi and for 3G. I have to say that the 3G player you can't buy, the Wi-Fi players can be purchased. And that's um, because of an Optus? That's because, yes, the, the 3G player has the Optus modems in them that belong to Optus, so we can't actually sell those devices. Now, very interesting question here about how are we finding the transition to digital, especially for older clients? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that's an ongoing process and it is challenging but we have, uh, because of the um, situation that we come with CDs becoming harder to get for our library service and the costs um, that come along with that, we are having to move to an online service. So we support our people as much as we can. We um, encourage them to have a go at the 3G player because it's not a lot different to the one that they've been using previously. And we find that quite often once they get started, they just love the idea that if they get a book they don't like, they can just press a couple of buttons and it's gone and we update overnight. So for them, they're not waiting for the mail that often takes a long time to get to them and they can choose their books and get them quickly. So um, it, it, is a, it is a tricky process, but we're working our way through it. And um, we are hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have changed to an online service. Thank you, Anne. And now for a little bit of light entertainment. <laughs> Sarah will show us the Felix kit. I'm a little bit out of breath because I just ran and got one. Should have been more organised. So this is a Felix kit. They come in these cute little suitcases. Okay, and each, each kit, I'll just try to show you the inside. So they each have a CD book. This one's 10 Little Fingers. Um, and they come with our print braille book. So as you can see, it just looks like an ordinary book and you can't really make out the braille on the video, but each page has got the braille. And unfortunately, I picked up one which didn't have a tactile book in it, um, but it does have a tactile toy. So you've got your 10 little fingers there. So that's a really great um, non-visual aid, I guess, so that um, children can have a feel and, and count out fingers. So yeah, each of the kits come with um, great little things. Obviously all are um, for the specific story. 
yeah and then they get posted out in these if you'd like any more information do let me know so I guess the next question is related to that um, the question is I do not have a vision impairment but I'd like to be able to look at the resources available to children and families can I become a member of the library to review the materials available? So I guess that's for you, Sarah. Yeah, no worries. Um, the short answer is no. <laughs> you can't become a library member because you're not eligible because you don't have a vision impairment. But that's not to say you can't have a look at what we do have. You can log into our online catalogue as a guest and you can see all the materials that we have available. <clears throat> and you can also use a demonstration login. So this is a login that um, you can use just to kind of familiarise yourself. Sorry, I'm slow breath. <laughs> uh, familiarise yourself with the um, app and also demonstrate it to maybe your students or um, children in the library. Um, so if you're interested in getting a demonstration app, um, do let me know and I can get you set up with that. Thank you very much, Sarah. And now we have an excellent question about how our blind customers without family can get assistance to use devices and arrange their accounts. I'm happy to answer that, Catalan. They can get assistance a number of ways. Um, someone from Vision Australia, an occupational therapist or adaptive technology specialist can go and visit them. Uh, if they can get support over the phone, they can be sent material in audio or braille, um, or we try and liaise where we can with, with um, a support person as well. So there's a whole lot of different options. And we, it's really a case by case situation when you're talking to people on the phone. and I spend a lot of my day talking to our members, training them to use these devices. And an, another question for you, Jamie, that is sort of related. Um, how do you initially find out where the icons are on the screen of the player you were demonstrating? Is it by the voiceover? Um, how do you know what you're clicking on? So as you touch the screen, um, when you turn voiceover on, it speaks to you what's on the screen. And I'll see if my phone is still on. Okay, so the app is still open. So I'm flicking through the screen. I'm going to close the app now, I think. No, hang on. It's a bit hard trying to do it upside down. Okay, so I've got my phone on the screen. So if I touch anyone on the screen, okay, the voice speaks to me where I'm tapping. So... So you can either drag your finger along the screen or you can picture where things are on the screen. After all, you get to know where things are. So um, if I want to know where mail is, I tap down the bottom of the screen. Down there. Up there. For, so, yeah, it's a case of learning the gestures to swipe, to, to flick up or to double tap to open. So if I tap on the clock, for example, Okay, that opens the clock. So yeah, it's about learning all the gestures. It's not something you learn straight away. Um, we do offer training for that through Vision Australia. And um, it, it is a fairly, you know, it can take a little while because you have to take it a step at a time. And for an older person that's moving to these devices, they've lost their sight, then they've got to learn a whole new method of interacting with touch screens. Not only do we get that though with our phones and, and tablets and things, but also now in the wider community, you've got other screen devices that require tactile interaction. And often the best way now is through apps to, call, to, to have that linkage. So a good example might be with some of the bank or some of the EPOS machines now, they're not all that user friendly or accessible. So if you've got something like Apple Pay, you can walk up with your phone and tap the screen and uh, with your phone and, and so forth or your watch and, uh, and that does it all for you. Thank you, Jamie. Now we do have oh, quite a few more messages and we've only got another four minutes. Um, so what we might do is we will reply to you as best as we can. Um, and what we might do is when we send out the email with the link to the webinar, we will include answers to some of those questions as well. And if they are slightly more complex, we will get in touch with you um, directly and answer those issues. Um, now just one thing, a couple of short questions here that we might have time for. Uh, do we offer a trial for devices for the elderly in case they can't manage the technology? I 
Yes, the answer to that is we do have the cost of the rental for the 3G and the um, Wi-Fi players. We can arrange a monthly rental or an annual rental and that monthly rental will cover that situation. So if they're not happy with it or they can't cope, they can send it back and we stop the rental payments. I'll just have a quick look, see if there's anything. The camera is flicking to Anne because of the static in her headset. Yes, we've noticed that I've been muting Anne on and off. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I didn't realise. I thought someone was typing in the background. Okay, and just one quick one for Sarah again. Are the print braille book images raised to be able to feed? feel them? Oh, that's a really good question. No, they're not. Um, so what the only thing that's raised in the print braille is the braille itself. Um, it's not actually beneficial to a child to feel raised bumps of um, an, a, a picture, like they're, they're not able to really navigate that properly. And that's where we have the tactile books, which are um, used to represent different things in a more accurate way. Like if it's a book about ducks, there'll be some feathers for them to feel. Or if it's a rabbit, it might be two fluffy ears. So they learn to um, kind of um, know what's what based on um, the different things and there's consistency through the Felix books to make sure you know if it is a, a bunny being represented it's always the same thing um, but just outlining um, a picture of a bunny on a page is not going to be of great benefit to them so no that's sorry that was a long answer to a short question no <laughs> can I add to that, Sarah can I add to that very quickly yeah. as a, a blind person with, with, uh, with sighted children with, and, and I've had young boys and I've, and I've got five boys but when I used to read the print braille books to my boys when they were little, some of them have um, a caption for the picture in braille. So um, there was a, like the text and then sometimes a braille caption. So I knew what the picture was on the page. I didn't need to know it. I didn't need to feel the picture, but it was quite useful to actually know what the picture was in context of the story. Thank kind of like you, audio description. Thank you, everyone. Now I will, um, We'd just like to say most of the rest of the messages, not all, but quite a few of them are, are um, telling us about the wonderful information we've provided. So we hope that all of our participants today have got something out of the session. Um, it's not the end of a conversation. If there is anything else you'd like to ask us, please feel free to email. And we will now all say goodbye. And I will put up a slide just with the basic contact information and leave that up for about a minute before I close the session. So thank you, everybody, and goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for thank attending. You. Thank you for Bye. listening. Thank you. Bye.